All right. This here's a Vanson, Vanson jacket. It, uh, it's a 46. It just has the polyester thin lining. There's no insulation in this. All right, so it's nice for Southern California. I bought this in 2003. Uh, when I bought it, I was probably 15 pounds heavier than I am now. <laughs> it probably fit me a little better back then. Because uh, it's interesting with this jacket. Uh, it's good thick leather. Vanson makes leather jackets for racing. A lot of the racers use it, like pro people. So you can just see that it's still a little bit big in here. I just tighten these up. These laces come loose all the time. So it's got the long enough sleeves. So when you're on, on the bike, you can reach the handlebars. And I was on a cafe racer, so my body position was, you know, kind of like this. And that's nice to have. But you can see how much extra room there is here. I rode this uh, with this jacket on over Mount Rainier in snow, sleet, hail, with just a t-shirt and a sweater on under it. And it was great. But I went down a lot in this jacket. Uh, you can see here, you can see this, there's a little mark here. I went down in this jacket on uh, Wilshire Boulevard once. I had a little 380 handgun in there. It's not like I'm always walking around with a gun or anything, but you know. And that left a mark on there. And I had a real bad accident in, the, in this on, uh, on, Wil on uh, Melrose one time on my way to lunch. Got some great details. Got the uh, yoke, the western style yoke on it. Hangs perfect. If it wasn't so baggy, you know. <laughs> this is, this is a little big, you know. But uh, yeah, that was a crazy accident. I was coming along Melrose at uh, Crescent Heights, and there's a blind, kind of a blind corner there, because there's a building that comes right up to the corner if you're heading west. And I was flying along. I was in. There was two lanes in each direction, plus a middle turn lane. I was in the fast lane passing lane and as I got into the intersection in my with my peripheral vision I saw this car coming to hit me and I can see right through here I had clip-ons on a cafe racer and I just read Subaru on the front of that car and he hit me right on my foot I was wearing Wesco engineer boots I always wear good gear I had gloves this jacket Wesco boots obviously a helmet and uh, I thought to myself, shit, this is going to hurt. <laughs> and I was cursing him out as I was flying through the air. But he hit me, and I went into a van that was making a left-hand turn <clears throat> coming at me. So I hit the side of that van and kept going. I was catapulted off the bike at that point. According to the cop, when I was in the emergency room, they said I flew through the air like a rag doll, hit the ground, he said, 30 feet through the air, hit the ground, roll another 25 feet or so. So... I ended up way beyond the beginning of the turn lane on the other side in this jacket. Actually, it's funny. I'm laying there, you know, all crumpled up. And when I opened my eyes, this was a bad accident. I've had a couple, quite a few bad accidents. This was a pretty bad one. I didn't actually break anything. But uh, when I opened my eyes, I saw feet all around me. And when I started to move, I heard, Oh, he's alive! <laughs> and so... And there's these people like, don't move, don't move. But I did a body check, you know. I knew I was okay. I started moving, and I was more concerned about my bike. And I'm like, where's my bike? And somebody pointed. I looked, and it was just demolished. And uh, I had somebody help me get up, and I could tell my foot was swelling. And this girl got in front of me, Lauren. We became pals after this. And she's trying to convince me I'm in shock. Of course, she didn't know me. She didn't know how many times I've been in major accidents and near death and all the other crazy things that happened to me. I was actually pretty calm. And I said, just help me get off over here. So I got off the road, and I told another guy, I said, get my boot off right now, because my foot's swelling. These are, you know, $380 boots, whatever they were. I don't want them cutting these boots off. i got to save these boots. I wasn't going to go into this, but it's kind of a funny story. As it turns out, Lauren was... Uh, I guess personal assistant, basically. It might not be the correct term. For a pretty famous comedian at the time, it was Ralphie May. This was 2004. And Ralphie, he obviously, was still alive then. And he was like 500 pounds. And so she had me go up there and do some work on his house. And she'd done some com comedy work. And 
you know, it's something I always wanted to do. I'm not a necessarily a joke teller, but I'm pretty good at telling stories. <laughs> and uh, so I went to the house, and I did some funky drape thing. I came up with this cool system to make him look bitching. And I was looking around his pad, and I was like, this guy, you know, he's a pretty famous dude. He deserves to have better furniture. And as a joke to her, I didn't expect her to repeat this. Remember, Ralphie's 500 pounds. I said to her, I said, you tell Ralphie, I'll build him a badass coffee table, not a coffee table, a dining room table, so sturdy he could fuck on it. Well, she told him I said that. And uh, within 24 hours, I got a phone call uh, from her saying, Ralphie wants to meet you. And that's how I met Ralphie Mann. I went to his house a bunch of times, three or four times. We bonded pretty well. He was hysterical. I mean, he was making up jokes on the spot. So, uh, yeah, that guy was pretty cool. And it's a, it's a shame that he passed. We never got around to doing all the things he wanted to do because after that he had his lap band surgery. And I guess he didn't really stick with that. I don't know what happened. I don't really know what his story is, but he passed, and that's a shame. And his wife, Alana, she was a sweetheart. But uh, anyhow, Vance and Leathers, real thick. This is a jacket that <clears throat> uh, I had in the closet. I had two Vansons that I bought pretty quick back around 2003-2004 on eBay used and uh, this one I sent to a friend of mine in New Jersey who's a heavy smoker and when I was home this time I forgot to bring a heavy cone it started getting chilly and he still had it hanging in his closet so he gave it back to me which is cool but uh, boy did it smell like cigarettes and I went through a fiasco trying to get the smell out I put in a bag with uh, baking soda and all the tricks wiped it down with baby wipes and eventually I got some leather cleaner and then some leather conditioning and it's good that I did it because this is a real thick leather and it was pretty stiff and now it's so supple it's amazing um, you know it's got a leather lined gun pocket right here obviously and a little pocket in here zipper sleeves to, at the ends there it's all Vanson I think I had the uh, I did I had the zipper replaced on this by Vanson I sent it to them and, uh, it's yeah, pretty much it, man. Badass jacket. It's just, you can tell, if I could just get it tighter, it would be nicer. For me, personally. I'd actually be willing to sell this jacket for the right price. But, uh, you know what they go for new. This is no joke. I mean, Shop makes a great jacket. Langlitz makes a great jacket. There's a lot of good makers out there. You really can't do much better than Avanson. And, uh... It's one of those companies. I eventually had them make me a custom jacket that I designed myself. And it, that thing still fits like a glove. It seems like it might be a little tight on the upper body these days. Kind of hard for me to judge it. I just had a bo different body type back then. I'm in better shape now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, fancy. Yeah, you, you try to find this jacket on their website, it's not there. There's no belt. There's two hand warmer pockets with zippers. Yeah, and uh, that's it. It's all you need. A couple pockets here. Doesn't have the upper pockets. Doesn't have the slant pocket. Doesn't have the D pocket. It's real clean. It's more like a cop jacket in a way. This would be a good uh, officer jacket. Maybe. I don't know. What do I know? So yeah, since 2003 had this thing 17 years, although it was out of my possession for about 14 years. <laughs> Next one's going to be the one I had custom designed. Hope you enjoy this.